Welcome back to Talon 101. And I understand F1 plus 2 is not the same move anymore, given that it no longer yields a counter hit launch. It only gives you 41 damage at plus 7, where most options can be backlashed. And a heat engager. And if you don't have heat, plus 4 force crouch with 37 damage. It leaves a lot to be desired. You get that. And some players are looking to drop this move, but it still has a use, which hasn't changed from Tekken 7. So the main thing is that this move tracks in specific situations that another move otherwise wouldn't. So if you're against SSL at, let's say, plus 1, F1 plus 2 will not track there. But if you do DF2, you will track towards the left. But if you track towards the right, DF2 will not go there, but F1 plus 2 will go there. And if the opponent does backdash, DF2 will whiff, but F1 plus 2 will cover it. You're gonna see that this is the pattern throughout a few examples that I'm about to give you where EF2 will always catch towards the left, F1 plus 2 will always catch towards the right, and F1 plus 2 has a higher chance of catching backdash compared to DF2. That was the plus 1 situation. We're now gonna move to the plus 2 scenario after RFF2. You do F1 plus 2, again, will not track towards the left. But DF2 will do its job and track towards the right versus sidestep right. Again, F1 plus 2 still hits them, but this is a weird scenario. They swap sides most of the time, so be ready to lock. But of course, DF2 will not hit here. But against backdash at plus 2, you're pretty much fine. Again, all of this is tested against Lily. If you're playing against other characters that have a stronger backdash, that can make both DF2 and F1 plus 2 whiff more consistently. So just watch out for those matchups. But this is like a decent barometer already with a strong sidestep and a decent uh, backdash. We're not going to move to plus 4 with force crouch. And supposedly when the opponent does get force crouch, it's going to be harder for them to step towards the other side where they're not. But in this case, if they're in player 2, usually they're going to be stepping towards the right. And at that point, F1 plus 2 will always have your back where DF2 wouldn't. But of course, if we, we, we if we were to swap this, then it becomes a different story where EF2 has your back and F1 plus 2 doesn't. But of course, if they do backdash, EF2 continues to not be in action while F1 plus 2 is. Going further, let's go to plus 5 now. So plus 5 on hit after, let's say, a 4-3. This is when the number... Or this is when F1 plus 2 starts to become way more consistent than the F2. So again, that was against sidestep left. Again, you saw F1 plus 2 did hit earlier. It's now again sidestep right. Consistent. DF2 not catching sidestep right. Side walk left. This is when it whiffs. And it's probably the only option your opponent would have to answer if they wanted to avoid the scenario. There you go, stay there, beat sidewalk right. So that means sidewalk right has a little bit of an asterisk depending on the range of when it hits. But you can still gamble on it if you'd like. And if they do backdash, again, F1 plus 2 covering that scenario where DF2 isn't. Last one I'm going to show you is off LFS1. This is LFS1 on block in particular. Again, we'll go back to sidestep left. F1 plus 2 still catching. DF2 continues to keep it at SSL. I step right. Yep. And then, of course, if you attempt to do DF2, it's not there. Sidewalk left against the one thing they can do. Then sidewalk right. Catch. I believe LFS1 doesn't have the asterisk, or if it does, just know that it can lose from time to time. So in general, if the opponent is stepping towards the right, you're going to be doing F1 plus 2 catch them and then if they are stepping towards the left that's where DF2 comes in you can't default for one move over the other the only time you really do that is if you have a read that the opponent will press a button then yes I will highly agree that you should just press DF2 and even if you trade you can still get a lot of damage off it that can be improved upon <laughs> by like a lot if you have the read because sometimes you will get the trade where it's plus 9. But if you don't get the trade where it's plus 9, hopefully you're within range for a DF3 plus 4 to connect. But not against uh, Lily's jab, it, it would seem. 
or you don't get anything at all, which is a shame. So you're still plus 14, but nothing in this particular matchup. In other ones, it does catch. You just gotta, again, this is a lot of lab work in order to make up for a lot of lost singular interactions wherein you could deplete the opponent's HP. The other thing, again, at plus five and above, this move would track more. And again, it says catching sidestep left, F1 plus two. So the higher your number, whether you're an RFF or LFF, feel free to like, if you don't know, checking with F1 plus two at those numbers would be great. And then if you're at plus eight and above, like let's say off a regular jab, this is when you can start catching sidestep right with DF2. You can like default to DF2 more at eight frames of advantage and above. But if for as long as you're not at that number at plus five and they're not stepping towards the left or you're unsure, that's where F1 plus two continues to do work. That was the lesson for the day. I've been Frontier. And thank you for watching.